Let's get into the giant mailbag. What crazy thing did City, City do this week? It's time for Mattress Running the Numbers. Ready for the main event? The main event. Frequent Miler on the air starts now. Today's main event, the single best starter card. Mm. Built is out for real. They're available nationwide now with a card that is arguably the best or one of the best starter cards for someone just starting out, needs a credit card and is built the one. Well, there is some really strong competition. So we're going to talk about which one is really best and we will have the single definitive the answer. Single right? best, the single answer <laughs> the single. to the single best. Because we never hedge. We never, we never say, well, in a this single case, card. this is better, or in this case, that's better. No, we would never do that to you. No, definitely not. Um, although we might. Yeah, a little <laughs> we'll bit, see. possibly. We'll, we'll see, see we'll what see. happens. We, we, we don't know, because, I mean, it happens live, right? I mean, we, we, we have an idea of what we're going to talk about, but we haven't, like, talked about it yet. So. Exactly. We have, we'll no, see. we have no idea. We have no idea. All right. Uh, getting into the giant mailbag. Today's mailbag uh, mail comes from Danny. Danny uh, says, another great podcast as usual. In the latest episode, you mentioned use cases for Wyndham slash Caesars transfer ability because you could transfer back and forth between Wyndham and right. Caesars. True. And he says, there's one potentially useful use case you didn't mention. Hmm. A useful you use transfer, case. Yeah. He says, can you transfer Wyndham points to another person? Well, yes, for a fee. Can you transfer Caesar's points to another person? Yes, for, for free. free. Ooh, ooh. He says, see where I'm going with this one? You can use Caesar's as a go-between to transfer Wyndham points from one person to another. Oh. Now, whether it's worth the hassle, that's another story. Oh, I think it could be. <laughs> it could and, be. And it, he quotes uh, Caesar's website saying, in quotes, stop by any one of our Caesars reward centers with your valid photo ID and a representative will transfer the rewards credits from your account to the account you wish to be gifted. Boom. Okay. That's a little harder so than I was to, hoping. Yeah. For you you've got to go there. Okay. Yeah. A little bit of a bummer there. Cause I was thinking to myself, well, my wife has the Wyndham business card and I don't at this point. So I thought, Oh, well, that's great because I could take the Wyndham points in my account and get them in her account since she gets the 10% discount. So I was, my interest right. was peaked there because I, I have a fair number of Wyndham points in my account from the shopping portal. And, and I bought some points before I realized how easily we were going to generate points. So anyway, I, I have some and I would love to get them over there where I can get a discount, but I don't have any plans to be at a Caesars again soon. So we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Never. And I, I could say from personal experience that the roll your own approach to doing this does not work. So what I had, what I had tried <laughs> is uh, my wife transferred her Wyndham to Caesars and I tried transferring from her Caesars account to my Wyndham, you know, thinking, ah, oh, they wouldn't know, but it, 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 I never got a message saying that, that there's something wrong. You know, I'd indicated it made it look like it was going to happen, but nothing ever happened. So eventually we just transferred it back to her Wyndham account and that did work. So, I yeah, see. I see. <clears throat> so go in Very person good. and you can do this little trick. So that's a pretty cool, you know, niche little uh, yeah, hobby trick. I for did sure. not know. No, I didn't know it either. And I appreciate knowing it. So thank you very much. Who was that that shared that one? That was Danny. Danny, Thanks, thank Danny. you, Danny. Appreciate it. So actually today, surprise, surprise, we've got a mailbag double feature. Greg didn't know it oh, until right now. No idea. We've got a mailbag <laughs> double feature. I am going to chime in. How could that be? I searched through the mailbag and I didn't see it. Because this one didn't come to your <laughs> address. <laughs> I got a message that I know Greg hasn't seen. So I wanted to be able to read it so he could hear it too. I right. get a message on uh, Facebook from uh, a reader who uh, who we, we both know we've met and uh, and he wrote to me and said, thank you so much for. Uh, oh, no, let me back up. Let me see. He said, uh, I wanted to uh, my wife and I wanted to send you a special thank you for all the advice you provided. We're having an amazing trip in Bora Bora with our seven month old twins. I most likely never would have done a trip like this if I hadn't heard from your personal experience bringing your wife and son here. We've already had so much fun and created memories we'll never forget. I really appreciate that you and Greg take time to respond to questions and give advice. Your work has really helped families like our own create special memories that will leave a lasting impact. We appreciate all that you and Greg do. Thanks again. 
So oh, there you go. That's, right? so, that's so sweet. Fantastic. We, yeah. we love that kind of feedback, obviously. Sure do. Uh, so we sure do. So I want to share with you. Yeah, great yeah. to hear. He just you know took his family on a vacation based on stuff that we've written about and things that he's learned from us over the years. So that was a, it was yeah. a very, very yeah. nice moment. Yeah. Ah, I love it. Love it. Yep. yep. So All many right. great rewards in this game and, and love that you can uh, do it with your family. And, and wow, that's that's terrific. A lot of fun. A lot okay. Of fun. All right. So <laughs> let's talk about what crazy thing. What crazy thing did Greg do this week? Greg, the frequent miler, this guy, I don't know about this guy. This Greg, the frequent miler guy wrote about which free night hotel free night certificates, which like credit card hotel free night certificates are the best ones. And what I want to know, Greg, is how the heck were Hilton free night certificates not the best ones? They're not capped. You can use them anywhere you want to use them. Even those properties that are charging 120 or like 150,000 points a night now, you can use them anywhere. How are those not the best ones, Greg? I love it. So, so in, in the post I wrote, I, I, I created a nice chart with like different features of all the different cards and, and put little green uh, check marks or thumbs up or something uh, for, for each one that had like something special going for it. And Hilton cards have a lot going for them. They sure do. Uh, uncapped. Um, you can even uh, gift them. You could gift the free nights to others, which is you know unique to Hilton and Hyatt. You can, uh, I added shortly after publication, which ones you are not going to be charged resort fees when using. So again, Hilton and Hyatt both have that feature. A lot of good stuff happening there. Um, and But others had some good stuff too. And it, it's kind of fun for me because I, I think that post I wrote, it's kind of like an ink blot test. You know, people are reading out of it whatever they want to read <laughs> and taking exception to things that I may or may not have said. Um, in reality, I, it's true. I didn't explicitly say the Hilton card is the best, um, but I, I explained why it's easy to make an argument that it's the best. In fact, I, I said one could easily argue that Hilton free night certificates are the best. They have no cap. As a result, they can be used at the most expensive Hilton properties worldwide. That's awesome. And um, despite my saying that, you know, people were like, hey, wait a minute, how can you say what you said? Hilton is the best. And the reason the reason that people are arguing that is is in my conclusion. I, I didn't say Hilton was best. I, I said depends on uh, you know where you want to go, what you, what your sort of travel style is. I don't. That's such a cop out, words. Greg. Come on, um, come on. Of course, <laughs> it depends. I, so, so I stand by that. So so yes, if if I were to just objectively pick what is best without any context, Hilton. No, no question. Okay. Glad to hear you admit it. Good. <laughs> but, you know, if, if I'm talking to a couple that likes to, let's say, go have a, a, a weekend in Chicago every year and they love staying at boutique hotels, well, you know, Chicago is full of Kimpton um, boutique hotels and the IHG cards might be the best for them. And, you know, it, it, the and they're not going to get you're not going to get incredible value at it you know using a hilton cert in chicago you could get good value but it's just not going to be incredible um and so i also stand by <laughs> the fact that <laughs> your travel style your situation is going to depend on uh which is best for those that are willing to you know kind of build their travel around what are the best travel deals I mean, Hilton, you just can't beat the fact that, yes, you could you could build a trip around these like free nights and and go to Bora Bora, go to the Maldives, go to you know some incredible places and stay for free on the weekends. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, that's where you want to go anyway, Greg. Come on. That's not a big limitation. You're not going on a Tuesday night. Come on. You want to go on the weekends, right? I mean, I, I, I mean, I know it's not as flexible as seven days a week. You're right. And, you know, I think the point you made in the post that was important is that if you primarily want to travel within the United States or even really within North America, there are very limited options for those amazing Hilton redemptions. You know, like there are some incredible ones around the world. There's that one in the Seychelles that looks amazing. There's really two in the Seychelles that both look great. There's obviously little Conrad Bora Bora where I stayed and where the reader who wrote in, I think has stayed. And, uh, you know, so there are, there are some of the Maldives, Conrad, blah, 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 the Waldorf Astoria and the Maldives, but you have to be willing to travel halfway around the world to go to one of those types of places. If you want to stay in the United States, you can stay at some decent Hiltons, but you're not going to be like, 
oh my goodness, everybody needs to go here. It's not going to be a you know a raving review like the like the Ritz Carlton Dove Mountain, for instance, that you went to and really liked, or the uh, Ventana Big Sur. There's there's really no Hilton equivalent of that in the United States, not that I know of anyway. That we know of, yeah, yeah. yeah. If somebody else know, knows it. Please and... tell me. Let me know. Right, I'd right, love to right. use some free nice certificates there. <laughs> yeah, and and you know, and they have they have that like Curio brand and, and yeah. a couple other things where where you you they're individual hotels and so there might be some that are great and, and others that aren't we just don't really know um the 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 funny thing is so i've kind of complained about how in my experience when i've gone to try to book hilton uh free nights like the awards weren't available when i needed them but um just last night i was i was looking up a potential weekend in Asheville, north carolina and i looked up you know, what are the best uh, points hotels in Asheville based on reviews? And, and there, there, like three really stood out. One, one is a uh, Kimpton. So that's IHG. Mm -hmm. Another is a, a Cumbria. So that's Choice. So mm -hmm. I was pretty excited about that because we know that um, Choice hotels actually in the U.S., cap out at 30,000 points per night. That's the most they're going to charge in the U.S. for um, Choice hotels. Um, and then there was the uh, Hilton. I, I, I think it was a Curio. I, I, forget I think exactly it is too. Yeah, I remember because I looked at that one also. Yeah, and it looks really, really nice. And it looks yes. like a very interesting place to stay. Maybe it's Tapestry. Um, I think maybe it's Tapestry Collection. But, but still, yeah. So there's a Hilton in Nashville that looks so, very nice. So, so guess which one of the three had a word availability? <laughs> the only <laughs> one of the three was the Hilton. <laughs> very good. Very good. I like it. <laughs> and you can so, use your yeah. free night certificates there. Oh, very good. Yeah. I'm glad that that worked out like that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, and I'll be curious. So are you going to stay there, you think, at some point? Uh, we, we actually decided to stay at a, a BNB uh, closer to where we actually want to be. So we, we actually aren't going to Asheville itself. So, uh, but it's just kind of funny that that. <laughs> you know, I complained right. about Hilton's not being like in the place you want to be and having right. and availability, then, but, and there, but there here I had a there specific personal example where it's like, yep. yeah, all right. Yep. Proven wrong. There we go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, so, so you were, you were a little crazy and not being clear how awesome those are, but at the same time, you're not that crazy because there are options that are probably better for other folks. So, all right, that out of the way. Let's talk about mattress running the numbers. So this week, what, what do we have for mattress running the numbers, Greg? Yeah, uh, so so a status match. So this doesn't really have, doesn't have, really have anything to do with mattress running. In a way, you could say it's lounge running. Lounge, lounge running. running. You're lounge running the yeah. numbers this week. <laughs> lounge running the numbers. And and here's the thing: um, Royal Air Maroc, which is a One World member is offering status matches from a number of different airlines. Um, and they are charging 49 euros to do so. So that about 55 bucks. Um, and if you do that, well, so one nice thing, if you're traveling domestically with American Airlines, like let's say you had American Airlines, like even top tier status, that does not guarantee you access to the lounges doesn't but get you get period in, yeah i mean it's it, not just right, right, right. So, you, know, you, you don't get true. in the door with that no no and um well i guess there, there's situations right if, if you're right. flying domestically it doesn't get you in if you're flying internationally you, you probably do uh it, it, the um with this royal air Maroc status you can get into the domestic lounges even though you're flying american airlines or JetBlue or, or you know uh so Actually, I'm not sure about JetBlue, but anyway, the point is, as long as you're flying a one world carrier, which would be American Airlines if you're flying domestically or um, Alaska is what I should have said, then you could get into those lounges. So that's pretty cool. Whether it's worth 40 or 55 US dollars to you to have a year of access to that probably depends on whether you're going to be flying a lot on American or Alaska and, and want that lounge access. Yeah, I so, mean, it probably depends on the lounges wherever you're flying to and from too, right? I mean, if it's flagship lounge access, that's probably worth more than the average Admirals Club that I've, I've only visited a few. But out of the others that I visited that were not flagship lounges, I don't know how much I would really... <laughs> pay for that but uh right, right. but you know but if you if you're in a new york or a dallas or someplace with like a really nice uh, admiral's club then then that may very well be well worth it to you so now it, it could be but but you also need to think about like do you have access you know to a great 
or a very good priority pest lounge. Right. You have access to a good centurion lounge, things like that, <laughs> which, which might, you know, make it less, um, desirable to do this. But if you're in a situation where it's desirable, um, yeah. Well, how do we play and this? You have st- well, how do we play this? So, you, so, so, so if you already have status in a non one world airline, they, they have a huge list of options for status matching. And if you have a high enough status, you get matched to a high enough status on Royal Air Maroc to get your lounge access. Great. Pay 55 bucks and it's good for, I think, a year. So, um, but there's kind of a fun other way of doing it because we've been talking about um, a lot this year about how American Airlines lets you kind of game the system sort of intentionally. Uh, You can earn points through shopping portals and other means and you get loyalty points and you could earn American Airlines high level status. So, this is more theoretical than something I want to do, but but you could uh, play this sort of merry-go-round where you where you earn American Airlines status through those kind of whatever means, right? Mm-hmm. Um, sign up for a whole bunch of you know different uh, food delivery options and things where you get lots of American Airlines miles. Yeah, you saw the and, Wall Street Journal first delivery came yesterday, <laughs> right? <laughs> and then you you. Um, uh, uh, status match to the airline formerly known as Aritalia, which is now <laughs> ITA. And then from there to Royal Air Maroc. And so <laughs> just a couple a of steps, little, like, just a couple of steps yeah, yeah. in there. A couple of steps, but, but fun, like, stuff. You, fun stuff. You know, I, I don't know to, to what degree it's worth doing all that, like objectively, but for those who like playing the game, it's kind of a fun little, you know, I, it's not even a loophole really. It's just, a way of of uh well gaming the system yeah 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 yeah, yeah. i looked at it and i was like oh uh, okay that's fine but I, i'm not gonna pay 49 euros to maybe use an american airlines lounge american <laughs> airlines lounge once or twice if i'm lucky uh so yeah I, I i'm not gonna go after this myself but i did look at it and say oh well that is kind of fun especially with the ita in between and, and some people probably already did the ITA match because it's been around for a little bit. So if you already did and you have ITA status just because you wanted to have easy status, then maybe this is worth it too. I was like, I don't know, should I be disappointed about this? I felt kind of disappointed that it's through statusmatch.com uh, only because I feel like that starts to eliminate it. Like if statusmatch.com becomes the default in between for these things, it might start to limit the game ability of some of these, right? Like, <laughs> true, true, true. <laughs> I don't really want status matcher or status, ma- not status match.com, status matcher.com, I guess matcher, yeah. status matcher.com, yeah. which is a very useful tool. I love the website for figuring out how to leverage your status or, or how to match to status. Not too thrilled with them becoming the in between, though, because then then you may not have such an easy time matching status around with these programs that you haven't actually fought with, which of right, course right. is you know not what they want, but right. So so let me say there are two different websites: there's statusmatch.com and statusmatcher.com. Mm-hmm. And so statusmatch.com. Okay. Well, statusmatch.com, I believe, is the one that tells you what you can link from and to. Um, I'm not sure which which one this Royal Air Maroc one well, goes through. But darn it, I, I should have known that. I assume it's Matcher, <laughs> but but uh, you know. Okay, th- so that's... it's one of those sites, and you'll find a link to it in the post that I'm going to put in the show notes. So there will be more detail there. So statusmatch.com, I've actually never been to until just now. Status Matcher is the site I've always used to look at it. But at any rate, they both exist, and so there's some matching capability there. Like I said, not a big fan of the middleman, so to speak, where you link up your accounts in order to do these status matches. It makes sense. If I were an airline, I'd like this, but, <laughs> but as a person who likes to pick up status yeah. without actually flying, I'm less of a fan. Anyway. Right. So let, let me set the record straight. I just okay, good. This up. So, I thought you were. So statusmatcher.com is where you could look up what are your options for matching from one thing to another and status matcher. No, nope. I'm sorry. Statusmatch.com without the er is where you can actually go and execute this status match to Royal Air Maroc. Without the R. Which is 
really confusing because <laughs> there should be the should be the verb one you know i think oh anyway um... all right we're, we're, uh, what a mess here what a mess okay all right guys yeah, so yeah. you can do something fun if you want let's move on all right so <laughs> that's that let's talk about the main event welcome to the main event today's main event is the single best starter card so okay we get this question all the time uh often it's it's uh from friends of mine who whose kids are, are you know just going to college or just about to turn 18 or maybe they're they're about to leave the nest maybe they've graduated college and they've had been using uh parents like uh credit cards and and now they're ready to get their own because they've got their new job whatever the reason it's their first card which one should they get and uh you know there's there's a number of good contenders for that uh but First, before we talk about any of them, any of the ones we're going to discuss, if this person who's getting their first starter card cannot be relied on to pay the bill in full every single month, they should ignore everything we say in the rest of the show. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> right. Get them the get them a debit, get them the point debit card, then to get them started out with some rewards. Yeah without spending any money or, or there, I think there are some other rewards debit cards out there. Maybe, or, maybe or, or just, or just use a debit card from your, your bank that, you know, if you have a no fee checking that includes a debit card, just, you know, that way you just can't get into that kind of trouble. Right. There's downsides to using debit cards, but I think the downsides of going into spiraling debt are worse with uh, credit. So, all right, that sort of out of the way, um, the, the card that I used to always recommend when people turned 18 was the, is the Discover It student card. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's identical to the Discover It card. So really you could sign up for either one. The benefits are the same. Discover It student has like one additional feature that the um, Discover It card doesn't have, which is every year for something like five years, you can uh, log on and, and tell them that you got A's and B's and they give you 20 bucks. So, <laughs> so it's, if it's, you it's got about, A's and B's, you can log in. And <laughs> right, right, right. Tell them that you got those. Confirm. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Right, 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 right. You get 20 so, bucks. so, so right. they pay you for being a good student, 20 bucks a year. Or so it's, liar. it's One small, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now we don't condone lying here. So, um, so discover it student card. It's really good. So, so, you only get 1% back for most purchases, but they have rotating 5% back categories that change every month and sorry, every quarter, every three months. And, um, and they're usually very popular categories of spend. So it's not, you know, unlikely that this person's going to be spending a, a decent amount within those categories. Um, it also has the benefit that you can redeem, you can redeem straight up cash back or you could redeem your cash back as gift cards for better value. So, so for example, um, they, they might, if you want a hundred dollar Staples gift card, they might charge you $90 of discover cash back to get that hundred dollar Staples gift card, just as an example. And uh, it varies by merchant, how much the discount is. And, and so, um, so that's pretty cool because, you know, often, uh, you know, young adults might not know all the other ways of saving at, at various merchants and having an easy way to, to save a bit on something like that is, is really good. Um, I've used it myself sometimes for, you know, uh, buying presents for people. So, you know, I download or I um, redeem my cash back for those gift cards at a discount and then buy what, what I want for other people, usually going through a portal. So I earn additional rewards, of course, but that's just <laughs> me. <laughs> um, the, the other, the other thing going in, in discover discovers favor is uh, very easy approval. So, you know, they're, they're used to approving people who don't have a, don't have a, a credit history. And if they don't approve you for the credit card, you should get an offer to be approved for a, a, um, Oh, help me. Secured What's the name card. of it? Secured card. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Where you have to deposit some money with them to basically secure that credit limit. And that way, after time, they get to know that you, you do pay your bill and everything. And they will 
offer to convert you to a credit card once you prove your your worth and you build up a credit history by doing that. So, mm -hmm. and it's it has the same. I, I believe it has the same features of the Discover It card. So, so you yeah. get those same you know cash back and everything. So that's really good. Yeah. So yeah, you know. <laughs> There, you made a lot of good arguments for the card, but I don't get excited about the Discover It student card. It doesn't excite me because the majority of purchases are probably going to be at 1%. Yeah, you might get to use those rotating 5% categories. But if you're just starting out, are you going to remember to activate the 5% categories? And then remember which ones are the 5% categories and remember which place to use them when it's time to use them. And remember that it's a new quarter because it's April 1st or whatever. Nah, I mean, that seems like too much work to me. And the rewards not that exciting either i feel like if that's your introduction to rewards credit cards like redeeming for a discounted gift card you are more likely to make poor rewards choices when you actually get valuable points and redeem your chase ultimate rewards for gift cards or something when when you should be holding on to them for more valuable things so while i can see the argument i'm not excited about the discover it student card that's not the one i would recommend to somebody i don't think yeah um and that's that's totally understandable though let me make a couple points here um mm -hmm. one is that i'm also assuming that someone starting out is probably not spending a lot on their credit cards like probably true. if <laughs> if they are they might be ready for <laughs> higher level than a starter card um and so if you're not spending a lot anyway the the sort of value of the rewards like this, this is more of a way to get a taste of rewards and, and you're just not going to earn a ton, whether you're earning at 1% or 2%. But at least so, earn a good sign up bonus. I mean, come on, you're going to get what, 50 bucks with the Discover It student actually, card? Actually, that's, that's a really good point. A, a sign up bonus could be very important for uh, for starting out. So you, so you get a, you get a nice, um, well, starter <laughs> 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 way to get started. And especially if it has a low spend requirement. To, right. You know. That's what I'm thinking. Cause the freedom cards that usually it's like a $500 spending requirement for $150 or sometimes $200 welcome offer. Right. So, I mean, you, you, $500 in three months, that's probably well within that's reach easy. for most people yep. and, and getting like 150 or $200 back on 500. Imagine if you're a student and you're buying a laptop or something, and you're like, wow, I got 150 or 200 bucks back just for buying something I was going to buy anyway. That seems to me like a much better deal. So I, I would be more interested, not saying that this is the starter solution, but I'd be more interested in perhaps a freedom flex if you really want the rotating categories. Uh, and not just for the, 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 the welcome bonus. I think the welcome bonus is important, but the Freedom Flex or the Freedom Unlimited is going to give you 3x at restaurants, 3x at pharmacies. If you're relatively young, you're probably getting sick often because you're out there in classes with other people, <laughs> mixing around with people you don't know that well. You're getting, you know, picking up the sniffles and whatnot. You're going to have to go to the pharmacy, get some cold medicine, get some Alka Seltzer, whatever it might be. 3x on all of those things i think is more valuable than than having a discover it card so i'd yeah. lean more towards L them. let me add let me add one thing in favor too you know uh college students that are in like towns don't don't tend to as often i think go go out to grocery stores when mm -hmm. they're shopping mm -hmm. but the the local walmart or cvs or whatever we often has like you know the the cereal and the toilet paper the things you need for for around your apartment and now you mentioned uh, Walmart, so my, not Walmart, CVS or like CVS Walgreens. Or Walgreens. Yeah. Walgreens, Walgreens is what I meant if I said Walmart. Yep. Sorry about that. Yeah, Walgreens. Um, and so, yeah, I think the I think that 3X could actually be meaningful for someone who's in that situation of often shopping, not just when they're sick. <laughs> to totally for, agreed. Totally agreed. I feel like I frequently, when I wander into a pharmacy in a city, I frequently see young people in there buying like grocery type items. I feel like that's... Yeah. You know, it's very, very common. So, yeah, I agree. I think that 3X pharmacy could be huge for all those regular necessities and 3X dining will be helpful. So I feel like on net, you're probably going to do better with that, even though you're still going to get 1X on a lot of things. Either way, now, would you go Freedom Flex or Freedom Unlimited? It's, it's tough. I, you know, when my son signed up, I, I had him go Freedom Unlimited because I know him and I know he's not going to be paying attention to what the 5X category of the quarter is. So I just figured better for him to get decent everywhere, one and a half X than to worry about, you know, 
is he even remembering to activate his his quarterly right. bonus? You know, right. <laughs> I would not expect him to do that. So, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I probably agree that I would take the Freedom Flex over the freedom for somebody young and starting out for that reason. Exactly. There's not well, freedom unlimited over oh, the sorry. Freedom Flex. That's right. what I meant to say. Freedom unlimited over the Freedom Flex for someone starting out much simpler, much easier. You know, set it and forget it, so to speak. You don't have to think about right. anything. Right. Right. So, and, and dining's got to be like right. one of the top categories of spend of, of any young person. I, I right. think one of the top, we're going to get to the top very soon. Right, right. But the other, I can't remember if you said this or not, if you did, it still bears repeating. One great thing about either of the freedoms as a starting card is that as you collect rewards, if you later are ready to move into really great rewards, you can add in something like the Sapphire preferred card, to your to your wallet and and that's great because that will unlock the ability to transfer points to transfer partners and and be able to get really outsized value so the same points that you earned on your freedom card can then be moved to your sapphire preferred card and then transferred for example to hyatt united a number of other programs and it's possible once you know what you're doing to get way more than one cent per point value that you'd get just by cashing out the points. Yeah, yeah, it's nice for that, for the ability to collect a stash of points that you can someday use for much more value. It's kind of like having a savings account or something, you know, that's like growing, even though it's not really growing and the value of points doesn't really increase, but, but the value of your points will significantly increase if you ever choose to learn about transfer partners and, and get a Sapphire preferred. So it does at least give you the chance to get far outsized value. Whereas earning discover cash, you're never going to get far outside value with or outsized value with that. Rather, you might get a little bit with those gift card exactly. reductions you mentioned, but right. you're not going to get like that trip to no, Bora Bora or no. whatever. It might not probably not Bora right, Bora. Right. For getting and, and if, if you're, you know, living at home with your parents at the time you sign up for it, then your home address is the same as theirs. And if one of them has a Sapphire preferred, Sapphire reserve, ink business preferred, one of the cards that allows transfers, you should be able to move your points to them and then they could transfer to, for example, Hyatt in order to book a great stay for you to get your outsized value. So and that's there, a that's there are a really other ways of of magnifying your your value. That, that's a really good point because I mean if you're a student actually and and you get to the point your junior senior year and you're taking a spring break trip somewhere, a Hyatt place, like a category one or two Hyatt place that's five thousand or eight thousand points per night might be golden for you, right? I mean, it might be, there are places where you can get one really cheaply and maybe be in a beachy type of a destination and and do it yeah. for very few points. So I feel sure. like yeah. that that has a lot of potential too when you're you know getting started. The fact that Hyatt has that award chart where you can get reasonably decent hotels at very cheap points prices. Oh yeah. So yeah, yeah. It's not unusual at all to see, you know, a hotel costing 5,000 Hyatt points that would have cost, you know, $200. Right. Um, and so, you know, that's talking about like $50 worth of your points used for a $200 stay. And right. that's what we're talking about in outsized value. Right. Right. Um, all right. So I think so, that's good, but, but I was a little hesitant actually when talking about the freedom unlimited thinking, yeah, yeah. but that person starting out is going to probably end up redeeming those like gift cards or for cash. And they're going to have a one and a half percent cash back card and they can be doing better right. than that. Right. 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 So, you know, one of our favorite cash back cards is the city double cash, which gives you in effect 2% cash back everywhere. Um, the way it works is you earn 1% when you're, when you make a purchase and you earn the other 1% when paying, paying off your bill for that purchase at the front of this program, we said, you know, you're paying in full every month. So we're going to assume that if you're doing this at all, you are earning 2% for every purchase, right? right. Um, the earning, the rewards come in the form of thank you points, which uh, can be redeemed for cash back. Um, and it has the same advantage of the, uh, or a similar advantage to the uh, freedom cards in that later on, you could tack on, for example, the city premier card and get the ability to transfer points to hotel and airline partners. Um, and in this case, if you have a family member or friend who has a city premier card or prestige card, you don't even need necessarily to have been in the same address. You could transfer your points to them 
as long as they very quickly uh, then transfer the points to a hotel or airline partner and book a reward for you, then uh, you can get outsized value right right from the get go. Right, right. I mean, if I if if I had a kid in college and I had the city premier card and, and the kids in college, then I that might be a good strategy, I think, where I would say, OK, well, you get the double cash. That's going to give you a reasonable return. If you want cash back for something that I'm not going to give you the money for, then you'll have your cash back there. And then uh, and, and if you want to travel, then you can transfer those points to me and I can help you book it. So I, I feel like that would be a reasonable solution if you're a parent that has the premier particularly, uh, and you've got a college student um, child. I think that's probably a really good strategy. Or even if you're a young professional, just graduated college, not a bad strategy to start out with that, to have that good base earnings and the potential for something more later on. So I, I like I think I like the double cash, even though I don't love city thank you points as much as I like other transferable currencies. I feel like right. this gives you kind of the best of both worlds with no annual fee. So you don't have to worry about paying anything up front. Uh, there's part of me that would be tempted to say, oh, a venture card, because you know, then you get the ability to transfer to partners or use 2% towards travel, uh, essentially, but then you have to pay $95 a year for it. So I feel like this is a good introduction for free. That doesn't cost you anything. The problem yeah. is that the double cash usually doesn't come with a welcome offer. And so very true. The value there may be erased, right? The, the extra half a percent mm -hmm. you're going to earn on purchases may well be erased by the fact that you could have gotten 150 or $200 on the freedom card with very few purchases. Right. right. And don't forget, you're not getting three X for dining and, and right. drugstores. Right. So, you know, uh, yeah, I, you know, I, I, it's close, but I kind of edge towards preferring the unlimited, the freedom unlimited over the double cash for that reason. And also for like the idea of like, which program would I want to invest in long-term chase ultimate rewards or city thank you points. And even though I've been really loving my thank you points lately, <laughs> uh, because of the ability to transfer one to two to choice, um, that's a very specific use case that, that I, I can be, I can enjoy that because I have other options when choice doesn't work out for me. Um, but you know, if you're looking for a program that's going to like meet most of your needs, I don't see city being that program. So, yeah. so I like the idea more of starting with the freedom unlimited because it, it gets you started in a program that does have a future and does have a way of meeting most of your needs in the future. That makes some sense. That makes some sense. I, I could, I could, probably let that slide uh, and say, okay, that, that's not bad. And of course, keep in mind, all of the cards we've talked about so far have no annual fee. So you don't have to have only one credit card. And, and you know, we're obviously sure. not the kind of people who are only going to have one credit card. We've got lots and lots. So I could definitely see the wisdom in having both for a young person. And in fact, your score will probably end up being higher if you have a few credit cards than if you only have one credit card. So it probably makes sense to get yeah. more than one. However, I know that probably the majority of people starting out are going to look to start with one. And so that's what we're talking about here. The starter. Yeah. Card that you're gonna, yeah. You're gonna get, but get you know, when you talk about that, if, if you want to expand to more than one and you want to keep the annual fee to zero, City actually has a very, very strong program in That's that true. regards. That's true. So, you know, add in, in the fact, rewards why, plus card. Why haven't we talked about the custom cash? Because that card. And add in the custom cash. Well, yeah. forget about adding it in. Maybe that makes more sense than the double cash, right? Because no. you get, we get 5% <laughs> back and up to $500 a month in the category in which you spend the most out of categories that young people are likely to spend a bunch in. So right. I, if you don't spend a whole lot, you may not spend a whole lot more than the 500 to begin with and 5% on that 500 without having to select anything, right? Don't, don't you think true. that might be worth that, more? That is true. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I feel like... Um, there's a, there's a good chance that people's like regular spend might might spread out between you know five or six different things and and if, if let's say it spreads evenly among five different things then then you're just getting one x basically or I'm sorry you're getting um, 
I guess you're getting almost two X actually. So yeah, maybe, yeah. I don't know. Actually, so I looked at it. As I, maybe that is pretty good because you are getting one X on the on the ones that don't earn five X. Right. So I figured if you if you end up maxing out five hundred dollars on a single category every month, that's twenty five dollars in cash back. So if you were using a two percent card, you'd have to spend one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars to earn twenty five dollars cash back. Whereas you're mm -hmm. probably fairly likely to earn $25 cash back every month with $500 spend. I mean, you're probably, I think most people are going to come pretty close to that. And then you got your 1% categories too. I don't know. I could see the custom cash perhaps being uh, perhaps. Yeah. You're, perhaps. you're making a good, you're making a good point. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely uh, worth considering it. It's more limited because uh, if you have only that, you can't transfer your points to a friend or family member. They, they don't allow that. And, and so your only hope then is to later get like a city premiere and combine the thank you accounts so that you then have transfer power. Um, so yeah, that's a downside. there's that downside, but yeah, you made it, you made a point. You might, you might do better, but um, ultimately I, I like the idea if, if you're, if you're really into, you know, um, no annual fee, if that's really important to you, um, you know, start with, let's say the double cash or the custom cash later, add the other one and, and add the rewards plus all three of them. Well, the rewards plus and the custom cash each have sign up bonuses. So you can, you can be earning some good cash back from those as well and do pretty well. Now, so, now let me ask you this. If you're going to do one card and, and you decide that you want this whole five X thing, would it be the freedom flex? Or the custom cash that you would recommend to a young person kind of starting out here if, if they want one of these 5x cards which one's the better one to get the freedom flex or the custom cash yeah uh, you know i i think i think i'd go with the freedom flex honestly because you know what even when you're not earning 5x you're earning again we talked about the 3x on dining True. and the drugstores so True. so that's pretty good and Again, you're building up your Chase Ultimate Rewards points, yeah, which could be useful. Long -term. Um, so, yeah. so I'd give that the edge, but I could see making an argument for yeah, the other. Yeah, interesting. So the tight, tight race here. But all of those yeah. things out of the way, of course, you knew we we're going to talk about the Built card this week because Built has made a splash. And the thing is, you look at all of the things we've talked about so far and the, imagine the expenses that a young person has. And we're thinking probably they're not spending a whole ton each month, $500, maybe a thousand dollars, maybe a thousand dollars a month. If you're, you know, relatively young and just starting out, that still seems like it might be a lot for a lot of young people on a credit card. I think so, yeah. uh, but you're probably spending more than that on one bill alone, your rent. That's right. And that's right. And the bill card is going to give you a chance to earn rewards on that. Right, right, right. So yeah, and, and so, you know, it's hitting the sweet spot, I think, for the young adult just starting out, most of whom are probably renting. And so, you know, why wouldn't you want a fee free card that rewards you for paying rent? And earns it gives you what 3x for dining and 2x for travel, one yeah. x everywhere else. Um, and we forgot the kicker. You don't need a to later add on another card to make these points transferable to get outsized value. It comes with that ability, right? right? So you could you could transfer your points once you earn them to American Airlines, to Hyatt, to United, to a whole slew of great transfer partners and get truly outsized value once you learn how to do it. And they actually include some tutorials right in the app of how to do exactly that. Right. I mean, I think that it really, you know, when you, when you think about it this way, when you think about that young professional, maybe just out of college, 22 years old, and you think about the fact that, I, you know, I don't know where their starting salary is going to be, but let's for just argument's sake, say their rent is even a thousand dollars a month, which would be fantastic. I think in most American cities, you'd, you'd be very lucky to pay that little. Uh, but so you're talking $12,000 a year in rent. And let's say they have a thousand dollars a month in expenses. That's another 12,000. So we're at 24,000 in spend each year, which seems like a relatively high amount for a starting salary, a starting person, right? They probably aren't even going to be spending quite that much on ancillary stuff. The rent's probably going to take up right. a larger percentage. So if you're earning one X on the rent, 
then that really helps to take care of whatever you might have lost on another purchase that could have been a bonus category elsewhere, right? I mean, you're basically Absolutely. earning two X essentially on all of your spend because you're earning this one X on something that you wouldn't have earned anything. On right, otherwise. right, right. And I don't think it's unrealistic to say that a lot of people probably spend twice as much twice on rent as, as they do on the other categories least, that, yes. where they usually use a credit card. So in that case, you're, you're really getting sort of the equivalent of three X everywhere and slightly more than that on the bonus categories, right? So yeah, it, yeah, I mean, um, that, that's so, incredible. So, and then I, I think we also should talk about some of the benefits because I, like when I look at this, I, I know a lot of bloggers have written about the built cart this week. And I know some people get skeptical about that because a lot of people are writing about it at once. But the bottom line is this card is interesting and exciting for its target market. It's not exciting for me. It's not gonna probably make its way into my wallet. But when I look at this young person starting out, I say, okay, here's a card that offers cell phone insurance with a $50 deductible. So, I mean, what young person doesn't have a phone right. And that's probably, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say the most valuable possession that the average young person has, right? I mean, I, unless you get a car, uh, which is, uh, you know, a lot of young people probably do, but in cities, it's probably not that common for young people not to have a car. Sure. And if you don't have a car, then the phone is probably the most valuable thing you own. So having insurance on that from the credit card is useful, right? right. right? I mean, that's, uh, that helps and out. I'd go, I'd go, so I'd go even further to say, it might not be, you know, if they have a car, it might not be, the phone might not be the most expensive thing they own, <laughs> but it might be the most valuable to them right. thing they own. Right. Like if you're forced right. to give up one or the other, what right. are you going to give up? Probably give up the car. Give up yeah, the yeah right. Exactly. <laughs> like, There's a bus somewhere I can catch. Right. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, so that a, that's huge. Uh, the card comes with primary rental car coverage. Now that's something we just learned the other night. And so, you know, if you are in that 22, 23 year old kind of range and you're just starting out in a career, maybe you're traveling some, maybe you're booking some rental cars. Uh, that's great. That's a great benefit to have that typically you have to pay an annual fee on a card for. I'm not sure off the top of my head. I can't think of, maybe there is one, maybe you're going to think of one, but I don't know of another card that offers primary rental car coverage with no annual fee. Uh, maybe there is one. I haven't even thought about it until I, I, I said the sentence. I, I just don't know yeah. off the top of my head. I, I couldn't say. All of the ones that I can think of that offer primary rental coverage anyway, have annual yeah. fees. Sapphire Preferred, uh, most of the Chase cards that are $95 ish a year have primary rental car coverage, the venture card. I mean, almost everything that comes to mind immediately is at least a $95 annual fee. So I think that's right. a potentially huge right. thing. There's no foreign transaction fees. Whereas that, the, the so that's amazing. Cause yeah, all the other ones except discover that we talked about do have foreign transaction fees. Um, you know, I feel like young adults, you know, the chance in the post pandemic world of going to Canada, going to Mexico or going further afield is pretty high probably. And, and you're going to need a card that doesn't uh, charge you a huge fee or you're certainly going to want one. It's, I think it's such a crime to be paying, you know, a 3% fee on, on all your purchases when you, um, when you're stuck with, with one that, that charges foreign transaction fees. So, so yeah, Built's got a lot going for it. Now it doesn't have a rewards program that you could sort of grow into the way the the chase and city cards do right like that's, that's you're not going to be a disadvantage to... yeah you're not you can't build out a wallet full of built cards right i mean it's just one built card. right that's it right right um but i'm not sure that matters and the reason is like so when you're ready to move on to have a wallet full of cards you could tack on a great Chase card that has transfers to, to you know, that has ultimate rewards that transfer to partners. You could tack on a great Amex card that uh, has membership rewards points that transfer to partners and a city card. And the neat thing is all of them have transfer partners in common. So the points you earned in with your built card, you could still transfer uh, you know, let's say you, you have a, a reward that you want to book with, with a particular program. Um, and you've got 20,000 built points and 20,000 chase points. And let's say Hyatt is the one you want. You could transfer them both to get 40,000 Hyatt points and, and book your stay. So, you know, they're, they're not all overlapping like that, but there's enough overlap that it's not like you really have to choose just one when you go for it. No, and, and that is, I think, such a great point that you will still be able to fill out your wallet with other cards that earn points that are transferable to the same partners or you know, many of the same partners. That is, 
I think huge. And, and I'm going to add on to that too and say, the thing that I think makes the built card also particularly interesting for those young people starting out with a career is it probably has points that transfer or it has points that transfer probably to the programs you're most likely to get involved in when you're starting out with business travel, because right. you know, you're probably going to be flying and traveling domestically, I would assume with most jobs, if you've got a job where you have to travel at all. And so you're going to be flying American or United or, you know, or even if you're flying Delta, you could be crediting those flights to Air France and and have access to those miles, or you're going to be using Hyatt hotels. So it's giving you access to partners that you're probably already earning some points with. And so you know, I think that that is another. So you're pointing that then you could then you could top then yes. then if you want to book an award with the points you've earned through business travel, you might not have earned enough through business travel, right. so you can move some of your. Uh, built points over and, and top it off and have enough to to book that award. So that's that's a great feature. Biggest downside, no no sign up bonus. Right, right, right. right. And and I and so, that obviously is something that we don't like. You know, the people that are, are rewards card enthusiasts that love chasing bonuses. Obviously, that seems like a big problem. Is it a deal breaker? Do you think that that's enough? I mean, in this case, when you look at the ability to earn on rent and and everything else, all the other advantages we talked about. Is the lack of a sign-up bonus a deal breaker? And do you think they'll ever offer one? I'm curious what you think. Yeah. So, so you know, the the some of the city cards we talked about often have um, two hundred dollar bonuses. The freedom cards often have two hundred dollar bonuses. Um, how much rent would you have to pay to s- sort of, if you think of the rent, the rewards from paying rent, how much rent would you have to pay to get? The equivalent of two hundred. A little less back. than thirteen hundred dollars a month, right? So I mean, thirteen hundred dollars a month be a little over twenty thousand points a year uh, that you'd earn from the built cards. So if okay. you're paying at, so, at least that much, right? That's kind of your bonus, right. right? So, so, and there you, and then it's then it's a bonus every year that you're paying rent. You know, so yeah, I I don't see it as a deal breaker. Um, it's unfortunate. And a lot of people have asked, do we think that it's worth waiting because maybe there'll be a sign up bonus? You know, it's possible there'll eventually be a sign up bonus. But I think that as long as this card uh, is, is popular uh, for new people signing up, there's no reason for built to, to spend the money of offering a big sign up bonus. And I think it will continue to be popular for a long, long time because all the reasons we just talked about. And so, yeah, you know, I, I, I wouldn't wait. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, I built is really, the, the whole thing has been constructed. I'm going to use the word constructed instead of built twice uh, in, in a brilliant way, I think, in the sense that, yeah, I, I mean, large welcome bonuses are an expensive acquisition cost. And 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 you're going to draw in people like me and Craig that they don't really want, right? Because we're not spending on right. rent. We would go after the card just for the welcome bonus if it offered a big welcome bonus. And built knows that. And they don't want us. They right. want the, that young person right. that's <laughs> renting an apartment. So they're not yeah. looking for me and Greg. So I, there's not a lot of advantage to offering a welcome bonus. And, and if there were enough people signing up already with the waitlist system, I can only imagine how many people are going to be signing up without the waitlist system. I just don't think that they're likely to hit a point anytime soon where there aren't enough renters in the world <laughs> that aren't familiar enough to have a wallet full of credit cards. Because let's be real, the average American has what, like one or two credit cards or something? Uh, average young American, I should say. I, I guess average American probably has a few more, but, uh, but probably not a whole bunch of rewards cards either. When you look at how many credit cards the average American has. It's probably like a local credit union card, a local bank card that might not even earn anything. It's just got a good interest rate or something. So when you look at actually how many rewards credit cards does the average person have, you have to remember we're the outliers here, you know, like we're bringing that number up, whatever it is. So built isn't looking for us. They're looking for those other people that, that rent. And, and I think also brilliant because I know that some landlords that are part of the built rewards alliance or whatever that are you know bought into this thing offer points for signing a new lease or that sort of th- stuff and and that is brilliant too because i'm sure the landlord must be right. funding that so essentially built is getting somebody else to fund their welcome bonus in in those right. cases right, 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 so right. i you know i think it's it's 
it's smartly put together from a business standpoint. I admire some of the, not admire, maybe that's not the right word. I respect some of the intelligence that went into creating it that way. Uh, so I don't imagine that there's going to be a welcome bonus coming. That said, now that they're partnering with Wells Fargo, who knows? Wells Fargo's got the resources that they can probably afford to waste some money on a welcome bonus uh, to acquire customers, but I don't know that they will. I, I Like you said, I probably wouldn't wait. Right. So would you recommend the built card for every, like per, every person asking that question, what, what should my starter card be? I'm starting out and, and I do rent. So for everyone who rents, would you recommend the, the built card? I, I think I would have a hard time imagining why I wouldn't. Uh, so I'm curious to see why you would say no. I can't think of a good reason why I wouldn't because you'd earn so many points on your rent that you wouldn't earn otherwise and 3X on dining still. So a great return on dining and you'd be able to transfer to partners uh, without getting a second card or paying an annual fee. And those partners are valuable. We haven't even really gotten into that, but we talked about it before. They've got really good partners. Uh, so I really can't think of like if, what are we going to recommend a city card and tell somebody to get a city card? And we know that those partners aren't nearly as valuable or we tell somebody to get a freedom or freedom flex and they can't transfer to partners unless they get all also get a $95 card. Yeah, I feel like if you rent and you're young and getting started out, I think the built card just makes the most sense. And I was skeptical. I have to admit in the beginning with the built card, okay. I was kind of like, eh, I don't know. All right. I'm going to tell you why you're wrong. Hey, tell me why I'm wrong. I'm going to tell you why you're wrong. It is not the right card for the average renter because, because. unlike Discover, unlike Chase, unlike City. The points, if you just want cash back, mm. aren't worth anywhere near a penny each. Good point. And so the only way to get good value, at least as things stand now, is in, with my understanding, the only way to get good value for those points, transfer to transfer partners, which it does have that big edge Great over point. the others of allowing that Great point. directly. But um, most people, the average person isn't going to know to do that. They're not going to know how to do that. They're not going to know how to get best value from doing that. So... I would recommend it to someone who I know is like smart enough to be able to figure that out. And, and, you know, will, will, or will come ask me, you right, know, right, right. Hey, I want to redeem these points. How should I do it? Um, but the average person is going to cash it out at bad value or, or use it to pay their rent at really bad value. That's um, that's a shame. That's going to wipe yeah. out all the advantages. Right. So, no, that's a very, go. very good point. Although, so I'm curious to, uh, so yes, it, my initial reaction is you're absolutely right. That that's a fantastic point that the average person starting out either A, isn't going to learn enough about the transfer partners or B, they're going to transfer to partners and still use the miles at poor value. You know, they might use a, a billion American Airlines miles to get a subscription to a magazine or something. Uh, and so they, they still, <laughs> although, although I have to say it, usually at least if you transfer, usually you, you'll get around a penny a right. point if you don't know what you're doing. Um, so, so, so at least, at least that probably is better than, than uh, paying your rent with the uh, with Probably. The Pro but then, yes, I, you know, you're going to have people paying their rent with points and making poor decisions. The vast majority of people don't use their points well in all of the programs. Yeah. Forget about just. That's true. That's, that's true. That's true in it, all it, these programs. You know, right. And that's a good point to make. Um, and so, you know, I, I just, I really like that the other programs we discussed allow you to just easily just say, I just want cash, cash yeah. and, and, and get that at a penny per point. So you're not, you're not losing anything over a straight up cash. That definitely card. makes sense. But okay. So here's, here's what I was trying to think through and I haven't thought through it yet. So maybe I'll, I'll get halfway into this and realize I'm wrong, but so you can redeem built points at half a 0.55 cents each towards the rent, I think is what it is. Right. So uh, just over a half a cent each. So if your rent is, uh, you said double, maybe your other expenses, right? So let's say, let's say your rent is $2,000 mm -hmm. a month. Your other expenses are $1,000 a month. Just to keep the math easy. So you're essentially earning the equivalent of three X on your everywhere else purchases, right? So three mm -hmm. times 0 0.55, that's what? 1.75. So that's not as horrible as it initially sounded when you, you know, when you said, oh, you're, you're going to get really poor value towards the rent. It's not as good right. as a 2% card. It's better than one and a half on a freedom flex. So, mm -hmm. uh, so it's mm -hmm. not necessarily horrible, even if you use it at horrible value, kind of. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, so, so change. there it'll depend on, on how much your rent is compared right. to your other spend, right. but that's right. true. That's and, true. Then, and then if you're earning three X on dining, then it's even a little bit more than what we just talked about. So I, you know, again, 
you're not your point is well taken and well made and i think it's an important one to highlight uh, but it's also i think the case that a lot of people are going to earn a lot more points with their rent so uh, so you really have yeah. to consider that a little bit maybe you're right though yeah. so so which and, one and i which one is it so 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 if it's someone who pays rent and and seems like they're 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 interested in in learning the game and smart enough to do so absolutely i, I don't think there's any question built is the one for for them uh they're not interested in that kind of stuff um, or uh, they don't pay rent. Oh, wow. Um, I'm going to go with, oh boy, Freedom Unlimited, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's Freedom hard. Unlimited, you think? Yeah. yeah. I, I, you know, I you can say that and I understand why. I would go with the custom cash. I think you're going to earn more cash yeah. back long-term with the yeah. custom. With recognizing the the shortcomings i do recognize the shortcomings but i think that for that person who is primarily going to be redeeming for cash back because you're right the vast majority of people are not going to learn about the rewards programs and so if there's any chance that you're that kind of person i think you're going to end up earning a lot more with the the custom cash card yeah yeah that could be true that could be true hard to tell hard to tell it is <laughs> it is because the, it, the way it works yeah, so, yeah. of giving a 5x only in like one right. category that you spend right. most each right. month right. but at least it is the one you spend most so you, you know you'll accidentally be earning uh you know the, at least a reasonable x as long as you're spending around $500 or less each month. Yeah you know I, I'd be interested in doing the math I'm not going to do it here on the show but doing the math and how much like everywhere else spend at one X, like where is it that you come out better than a 2% yeah. work card, right? Yeah. Like how much spend? Yeah. 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 Uh, so, yeah. So. I, I, I'm going to work on that after the show. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right. So, uh, so th I think that there's some interesting considerations anyway here between these cards and, and yeah. there's not a one size fits all answer, but we, we no, no. came to some, some agreement, anyway. but Built, built close, you know, but it, it has the caveats that we mentioned. Only if you're and, renting, you know, uh, I, I think only if you're renting or I think the built card also could be useful for people who are going to do a more than one card wallet, but don't want annual fees, uh, because I think I would yeah. rather have three X at restaurants on the built card than three X on a chase card personally, because I, I Hyatt yeah. is the chase partner I value the most and United is probably the one I value the second most and, and built got those. So I, you, know, you already right. get that. Plus you get America can and get some other stuff that chase doesn't have so absolutely i would totally agree with that okay so all right that brings us i think to the post roast which i, uh -oh. I know you don't have all a right. post roast this week right i already roasted you we talked about you're crazy you know you left out the <laughs> thing, so that's right that's right uh no i don't have a post Good. roast this week so, so let's go right to the, the question hook. of the week right to the question of the week i'm excited because yeah. this week's question of the week is an award booking question and it's something that i think we touched on briefly in a conversation a while back, but it's worth a highlight on its own. So Ron asks us, hi guys, I'm looking to book flights from Chicago to Boston for a sporting event on United. The trip is contingent on my team winning a game a few days before my departure date. Can you help me with a couple of potential options as I need a lot of flexibility until close to the departure date? United is out at face value as I don't have status and I'd have to pay a $125 cancellation fee. However, I can change the flight less than 31 days from departure for no fee. So can I book this and then change the date to the future and then cancel for free? And so I, if you didn't follow how he was asking that, I want Greg to explain the move. If you've got this situation, because this is an interesting situation, right? Where you're like, okay, well, maybe yeah. I have to go. Maybe I don't, I won't know until a couple of days beforehand. I don't know if my team's going to win. How do you get the flexibility you need? Yeah, yeah. So he, let me just uh, clarify. Some, he's booking an award with United, correct? Not not paying cash for United. Yeah, we talked about so, that separately. You know, the, the award I think is the part that, that we're gonna. Right, right. So you know, uh, during the pandemic, all of the domestic airlines, the major ones, added the great ability to um, you know make free changes to both paid and and. Um, award tickets uh, as long as they weren't basic economy and um, and they also allow the ability to cancel award tickets and get your both your points and any taxes you paid back um, united though added a strange exception that that in order to get your your money and, and miles back when you cancel a united award ticket 
it has to be more than 30 days from the date of travel. You know, you gotta do it at least 30 days, days in advance. Travel. If you don't cancel at in least advance. 30 days exactly. in advance, then they tack on a $125 cancellation fee. Right, right, right. But they don't have that requirement for changes, as, as this person mentioned. So I've done exactly this. So, you know, I had a United award flight that I'd actually booked as like a backup in case my earlier flight the same day didn't work out. And uh, when the earlier flight did work out, um, I just changed the date on this award ticket to on the United two award. months from now mm -hmm. on the United award. And then, uh, and I did this right from like the mobile app and I then went right back in and just canceled it and it canceled for free and got all my, you know, points back. So it's, it's really easy. It's one of those things that uh, we, you know, we don't want to shout in headlines, but, you know, I'll certainly answer it as a question when, when people ask how to, how to do that, or, you know, is there, is there a way for me to get my, my, uh, to cancel this without the fee? Yeah, there's a way. There's a way. <laughs> Here's how to do it. There's a way. We, the reason we don't want to shout it is like we United will away. block that loophole somehow. They might start charging for changes. We don't want that. Right. We don't want that. But I, although in the current market, it'd be hard, I think, for them to start charging for changes since everybody else is allowing easy free yeah. cancellation. So I think in the market now, that's less likely than when this trick worked in the past. Sure. It's yeah. like a, a right. very small loophole that you couldn't get elsewhere. Uh, but nowadays, of course, with free cancellations on a lot of different airlines, it's very easy to book these sort of things and not yeah. you know, have to worry about it. You can cancel with no fee up to very shortly before departure on most airlines. So uh, that is great. I think that's that makes these kinds of things possible where you know you could book that and be like, all right, <laughs> right. did my team make it or not? And and uh, yeah, or any other type of speculative trip, really. So so exactly, fun trick. Exactly. I absolutely love that. Yep. All right. So that brings us to the end. We hope you guys have enjoyed today's show. And if you have, and you'd like to get on our email list and get our posts in your inbox, you want to go to frequentmiler.com slash subscribe. Again, that's frequentmiler.com slash subscribe to join our email list. You can follow us on all the various social medias, join our frequent Miler insiders, Facebook group, where you can connect with other people, ask and answer questions about all this stuff we've been discussing. And if you would like to ask a question or give us some feedback, you can send that to mailbag at frequentmiler.com or dot net right, or, right. Wow. or just call nick at home at <laughs> right, no. right 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 <laughs> <laughs> Please don't, please don't. So uh, <laughs> don't do that. that. Thank you for being out there and listening this week. Oh, and please don't forget to like, subscribe, leave us a comment that helps us enable notifications wherever you're listening to the show or watching the show. We appreciate that very much. Sure do. Bye, everybody. <laughs>